Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at transformations of trigonometric graphs. Before we begin, you need to know your graph transformations. And we have a set of three videos on graph transformations for you to revise from. We will link that in the description below this video. And while we're at it as well, a video on trig graphs will definitely be helpful. So you know your sin, cos and tan graphs before we begin. Very quickly, let's uh, refresh our sine graph. So the sine graph looks like this, and it goes between minus 1 and 1. It goes up and down from minus 1 to 1. Minimum value of minus 1, maximum value of 1. It has a period of 360 degrees, so one full S shape, or one full cycle, is 360 degrees, and it repeats that exact same pattern on and on, forever, until infinity. Now let's look at some of the transformations. Here we've got sine of x plus 1, which just shifts the graph up by one space. Or you could also have y equals sine of x minus 0 0.5, and that shifts it down uh, 0 0.5 spaces. So the y equals sine of x plus d is just a vertical translation by d units. This is very similar to your normal transformations. Now we can also have horizontal transformations. So we could uh, add 90 inside the brackets and that shifts the sine graph 90 degrees towards the negative to the left. So y equals sine of x minus c is a horizontal translation by c units. And we can also um, subtract a number inside the brackets, and that shifts it more positive. Just remember that if you're adding or subtracting inside the brackets, it has the opposite effect on the graph. Subtracting a number makes it more positive, and adding a number will shift the graph more negative. Now we can multiply the sine graph like this, so we can do 2 sine of x, and that stretches the graph up and down, and now it will go from 2 units, all the way down, uh, from a maximum of 2, all the way down to a minimum of minus 2. Or we could also do y equals minus a half sine of x, and that uh, reflects it and then squashes it by a scale factor of a half. So you can multiply uh, the sine by a number and that is if effectively a vertical stretch by a scale factor of that number. Now we can also uh, do y equals sine of a third of x and this is multiplying the x by something and this is, uh, means that the scale factor is going to be um, for one third the scale factor is three. So it stretches it horizontally by a scale factor of 3. The general rule is that if you've got a y equals sine of bx, it will be a horizontal stretch by scale factor 1 over b. So it's um, a bit tricky, this one. So you've got y equals sine of a third of x. You flip the third upside down, it becomes 3. And that's where you get the um, scale factor from. OK? As I said before, this uh, period of the sine graph is 360 degrees. The new period will be 360 degrees times 3, or 1080 degrees. OK. Now let's see this in action. So we've got an exam style question here. It says we've got the graph of y equals sine of x between 0 and 360 degrees. On the grid, sketch the graph of y equals sine of x plus 90 between 0 and 360. Okay, so for this one, uh, we are adding 90 inside the brackets, and that means we're going to shift the entire graph to the left by 90 degrees. And it will look like this. So that blue curve is exactly what we're looking for. It is shifting the curve by 90 degrees to the left. Now, part B, it says between 0 is less than 360, 
the graph y equals sine of x over 2 minus 2 has a maximum at point p. Write down the coordinates of point uh, p. Well, here the x is being multiplied by a half, so that it's sine of a half of x. And so the um, uh, horizontal stretch will be flipping a half upside down. And if you flip a half, you get 2 over 1 or 2. So the horizontal scale factor will be 2. You're going to multiply um, the period by 2. And so it will look like this, where we stretched it by a scale factor of 2, horizontally. And then we're going to shift it down by 2 units. So we're subtracting 2 on the end of the function, and it will shift it down by 2 units, like this. And where is the new uh, maximum? It is at 180 minus 1. That is the new uh, maximum. Okay? That's example 1. Let's move on to example 2. The graph of y equals a cos of x plus b between 0 and 360 is drawn on the grid below. Given that a is more than 0 and 0 is less than b is less than 360, find the value of a and the value of b. Okay, so we've got the graph here and we're trying to find uh, the equation of this red line from the graph. And what I immediately see is that it is similar to the original cos graph, but we've transformed it somehow. Here, I've drawn the original cos graph. And we're going to see how we can transform this blue line to make the red line. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply everything by 2, because I want the red line to go from minus 2 to 2, so it's going to be twice as tall. And so I'm multiplying this by 2. <coughs> Pardon me. And then I'm going to shift everything over by 90 degrees. Because the blue line is like the red line, but shifted over by 90 degrees. So I'm going to add 90 inside the brackets to shift it to be more negative. And so the equation is 2 cos of x plus 90. And that is the equation of the, uh, blue, the red curve. <coughs> Pardon me. That's example two, and that is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. We are covering GCC A level and IB maths with quick and simple explanations, and new videos will be coming very, very soon. Check out advancedmaths.com for more revision resources to help you ace your exams. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.